bit of how bad you are at the game now. No, do you all remember when I got into a Knack skill and not one of you did? What? What? Do you, do you remember I was 13 at the time? <laughs> hey, do you remember you didn't get as good as me? No, I got as good as... I got better than you after. Classic. No, I seem to recall I was the best. <laughs> You did get uh, Realm First Dwarf because you're a dwarf. Yeah. Oh yeah, how many Realm no, First did you guys no get? What? <laughs> what? What was that? How many did you get? We did get an Oceanic First together. No, together we did. How many did you get that I didn't? Oceanic First? Any Firsts. Any of them. Just, just name one. Oh, so you're gonna come back and play? No. Why not? Because I did a track day on the weekend on the motorbike, and I think instead of spending money on WoW, I want to buy a motorbike just for the track, so I don't feel scared of that ditch in the bike I'm gonna ride. Wow. If I want to buy a motorbike, <laughs> I'm gonna ride that really fast and hopefully not crash it. He has to save up for hospital bills. <laughs> oh, it's the new fairings. I'm scared of it now. Um, Kane had a little off, and he crashed his Ducati a bit, and it, yeah, it's going to be expensive. I think a uh, $15 a month sub is uh, a lot more cheaper than medical bills. Yeah, but when I was going like 150, and then I hit a little hill, and then I did a sick wheelie, and then I continued to power on till about 200. And then I was like, oh, I've got to turn here and got scared. You know, that was better than the $15 wow sub. I, it, why have you got a weird looking cat? The rat. <laughs> no, this, this is what cats should look like, right? See, cat, meow, and it's angry, see? Angry. That's a weird looking... I think it's like this cat crossed with a rat. It's close enough to. He's adorable. Don't make fun of him. Do rats have sexes or feelings? Yes, they do. <laughs> they have and if you watch bad boys too, they apparently hump like people. <laughs> He's already tried humping my arm a lot. Where's El the Bond? Yeah, I'm surprised that WoW Classic was tomorrow. I thought it would be Wednesday after the, um, the server maintenance. I suppose nope. I want to do it beforehand in case I need to bring it down. Well, no, they're not planning any server maintenance, although I am expecting... Uh, I'll be logged in from 7.30 because you can get to the character screen. They'll just make that enter world button active at, at 8 a.m. Yeah. I wonder how many people are logging on, like, at, um, you know, 6 in the morning, just leaving it there. <laughs> well, Miss Puppy will probably wake me up at 6 in the morning, so I could, just to see if there's a queue at that point. I'll probably, I don't know, I'm gonna play it pretty casually. I'll yeah. Like 20 or 30 levels below you guys. I don't think you'll be that low. It, it evens out pretty quickly. It's like it once you hit level 30, you slow down. Well, he has four times the amount of gold that you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he'll be farming that way. <laughs> oh, Debundy's rearranged his, uh, his desk. Yeah, my room's changed quite a bit. I bought a table. So I'm oh, is it all in reverse? 
We can't see the fridge. No, he's on the other side of the yeah, kitchen. Of the room. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Oh, uh, look, it's the right. fridge. I like I that think table. You need to, yeah, stay pointing that way so we can always see your fridge because it was good to watch. Hang on, hang on. Go, go back the other way, not towards the fridge. Yeah, good man. I, I, respect. We've got the same clothes horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the big W one. Sorry about a late start today. You will be. So where do you go away? Saturday. Ooh, excited. Yep, because I don't have to work for a month. Sweet. But I don't get to ride a motorbike for a month, so there's that. Just fixing up a couple more things. Can we short rest, Artie? I short rest. <laughs> <laughs> you like little picture I put up? No. A little bit. We're conditioning to your place. Sir. Hey? We're conditioned to your behaviors that you allowed us to do. Fight, rest, fight, rest, fight, rest. <laughs> Last time I was this low on spell slots. We all nearly died. Oh, you all nearly died. That would have been fun. Oh, no, I would have survived. Do you get anything back on a short rest, buddy? I do. What do you get? Uh, it's a spell that I've never used. It's a CC spell. Ah, okay. Totally useful. It will be if I use it, but I've never used it because it doesn't do damage. Um, I, all I get is health. It's upsetting. I suppose you have got your orb. You can risk burning that. Again. Nah. <laughs> and Is dawn. it dawn yet? We're at like three sessions without it being fucking dawn yet. <laughs> You're about an hour away. So you, if you long you rest, said if... that last time. This is horse shit. We just battled two fights. Come on. So it was like four, wasn't it? Basically, yeah. It was four thirty at the last session. It's now about five o'clock. Oh, I was uh, saying it was like four fights. Oh, yeah. Uh, Three? So, yeah, so if you take the, the short rest, it should bring you towards six. Uh, is it an hour for short rest? Or half an hour. Okay. Two hour. hours. Two hours. Mm -hmm. I know, it's been so long. Oh, no, one, one hour. hour. Sorry. One hour. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll bring you to about six, and that's when the, um, the sun comes up. Uh, sorry, Kel's cooking in the kitchen. Got the beaters going. Uh, all right, I suppose we get started, eh? Hey. So, last week, uh, you and Entourage of Guard, uh, Old Town Guard, and Townsfolk. Uh, carefully made your way towards the bridge. Um, now, on the way, Lefner, you saw the body of, of Oswald Gregory in front of his mansion, and you informed everybody of that. Uh, you continued on, and you ambushed the cultists who were attacking the guard on the bridge, uh, and you assisted them. Uh, Dodrick, you cleverly positioned yourself on the bridge and spewed out a poisonous breath, which uh, was really effective on everybody. And then 
yeah, brought the fight to your victory. Slew everybody. Um, now, after the fight, Chug, you notice a few more uh, civilians hiding in the bushes on the um, on the banks of the river, um, and you encourage them to join you as you all start to make your way towards the tavern and group up there. Uh, along the way, you pass by Thoradin's steel shop, uh, which was uh, caught on fire and you heard a cry for help. Uh, inside, you found Thoradin bearing the weight of a collapsed pillar uh, and preventing it from falling on an unconscious ci uh, civilian. Uh, left left up, you quickly snuffed out the fire and Chug, you pull the civilians to safety and then Thoradin drops the pillar and joins you guys. Now, you have all made your way towards the tavern and have reached there and you found Rebecca and a few guard positioned at its front and she instructed uh, everyone to make their way inside for a quick debriefing. So that was last week? Week before. Week before. Last, last session. Last time. Alright. So you follow Rebecca. Um, you'll go inside the tavern. Uh, inside you can see Michael uh, and Liam. Um, who are attending? Hang on, where did that was wrong? Sorry, no, not you don't see Liam. Apologies, I've misread my note. Um, you see Michael tending to quite a few civilians, which is sort of sitting around uh, the tavern, just finding whatever space. It's very crowded in here. Um, there'd be a hundred or so bodies, uh, and it's quite hard to move through. Generally, everyone sort of found a space along the wall's edge and sitting down. A few are sitting at tables or on tables. Um, now, Rebecca heads off to the left and to the stairs, which actually takes you upstairs into the sort of guest room. So if you were to rent a room at the night at this tavern, these are where these rooms are. Um, as you go up the stairs, they sort of, um, they've got a, a, a right hand hook in the stairs like a bit of a landing and then they continue up at a 90 degree angle. Um, once you make it up to the top, then you've got a, a long corridor and you've got um, what presumes to be uh, four doors on the left, four rooms, and there's two doors on the right um, for two other rooms. Now Rebecca takes you up and you enter the second door on the right. Um, and inside, you see some scrawled out notes and bits of paper. Uh, Liam is in there with two older men as well. Uh, these are both human, uh, greyish or greying beards, uh, slightly balding on their heads. Uh, one's got a bit more of a darker complexion um, and probably a, instead of a, a whitish gray, a more uh, silvery um, gunpowder gray in his, his color. Um, Rebecca leads you in, you all follow in, and she uh, says, you know, hey, come in, come in, close the door, and says, uh, have you met, um, <laughs> sorry, Ted. hey, Ted, Ted, hold on, sorry, I scribbled these down pretty quickly, and I didn't, um, didn't make the correct notes, sorry, uh, have you met, uh, Lander? and um, Ivor, which both of them, they just sort of stand grunty, both similar of complexion, um, and they just say, yeah, hello, uh, Rebecca has told us a bit about you, uh, we understand that you have travelled up to see uh, the wizard in the tower, uh, and we're hoping that you've brought back good news. Now, I am, yeah, uh, Ivor, and this is Luce. And we are both members of the Berean Council. Uh, I pull my sword on them and, you know, intimidated, intimidating like, go, how did you find out about the tower? We only just got here and fought our way in. We've literally told no one about this. <laughs> and, you know, pull my other hand and cast Prestidigitation and make some sparks appear. <laughs> All intimidation. Fucking A, it's about time. Fuck yeah, this is going to go well. What's my plus? I haven't got the right tab open. What's that? Uh, 
Um, 24. 24. <laughs> um, now, uh, Luth is the uh, is more pale and, and whiter complexion fella. Um, Ivan uh, is the... Oh, sorry, Ivan? Ivor. Ivor, sorry. Uh, you said iPod before, so iPod. we're going to go with iPod. iPod. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll go with Ivan. Uh, Ivan is the, the dark complexion, so for, and so you just lunge at, at um, Lucy. He's like, whoa, 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 uh, and he's sort of looking to Rebecca, and she jumps in, and goes, hey, hey, just calm down, calm down. I had a moment to debrief uh, both of these two while you've been away. They've been keeping tabs on your progress. It's okay. How? How have they kept tabs? How do they know we made it? How do they know any of this? They've both been here well before you. Jug swipes the sword away from one. <laughs> I think one's right. Maybe they're in the cult. Yeah, I think they're... Mm, yeah, I think we leave it to the tiebreaker, the waller. What do you think? Uh, well, I think this is the first time we've heard of the council. What, what What's this council? Sounds like the Council of Midnight. <laughs> so, uh, each of you guys have a, a general understanding of the town, and you do know that it was led by a group of councilmen with a, uh, a head, which was Oswald. Uh, it was Oswald, and there was two others sort of beneath him, and they sort of shared duties around the town. Uh, I believe this was explained to you when you first met Oswald as well. Nah, we're too busy accusing him of killing his own son to really pay attention. Uh, well, I, I quietly remind Juan that uh, we did have that that uh, seer stone, and we were talking to Liam, who was in close proximity to the chick. So, uh, sorry, buddy. You lose on this one. Is Liam here? Or is or Liam is dead? Um, no, he's in... um, we don't know yet, do we? No, I haven't seen him yet. Oh, I thought you said he was in the room. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes, sorry. God, I'm was that... I thought that was and Daddy missed that. Yeah. Organised saying wrong name. Yeah, unless you meant someone <laughs> else, I, I, in I which was, case... I, I confused myself <laughs> so badly, sorry. Yes, no, I did say that Liam was there. There's two of us in the room. Uh, this is after a great start. So we're all, <laughs> we're, we're all playing two different characters. <laughs> Don't mind me. Uh, oh, shit. Did this room just get suddenly crowded? Where, where's that stupid monk? We've got to get that dynamite off him. Is he in this room as well? <laughs> Actually, I have a plan. If we go back to our house, maybe he mailed it to us. Ooh, maybe. We'll have to check that out. Yeah, that's safe. Putting dynamite in the mail. It's going to get arrested. Anyway, I can understand that the councilman would know about us going to the tower. However, I don't trust him. But they do know. Um, so Rebecca says to you guys, look, look, I've got everybody here. We've been trying to make sense of what's going on. We've been caught by surprise with, uh, with all the conflict in the town. We did not know that the, the cult had such vast numbers and they've overwhelmed a good part of us. Uh, at this stage, we're saying that we've lost the western part of the town past the river. We're doing our best to hold the eastern part on this side, but the guard, you know, my, my guard are uh, falling. They're getting tired and this assault is relentless. Um, I turn to Rebecca and say, well, that's understandable because there's a spy on the council. And I turn my sword back to these guys and I say, there's only one way this many people could infiltrate the town without us knowing. And I, you know, I menacingly keep looking at them because I'm convinced that one of them is evil. Um, convinced <laughs> Luth sort of says he seems unfazed by your comments and he goes we actually agree with you Chug nudges one and says don't forget to mention they only attacked after we left yeah who knew we were leaving except you Rebecca and <laughs> I turned my sword towards her because <laughs> she sent us on the mission and no one else knew about it 
she sort of um, sort of takes a step back and says, "Well, no, no, I have not done anything of the sort." This is that's that exactly what the traitor would say. <laughs> No, I have been on your side. I've been working with you guys. I've not been working with anybody else. My life has been this town. I've put you know, everything into making this safe. I have no nothing to gain by doing this. This was not me. And you wanted to love Liam, that he wouldn't love you back. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> now you're seeking revenge on the town by Liam, taking it Liam out. Liam just takes a step forward and says, uh, do we need to evict this man? <laughs> I want to say yes, but my heart says it no. It seems a bit um, off the table, so to speak. Well, well it is five o'clock in the morning. We didn't get a full rest, <laughs> and we're bleeding. So, yes, yeah. we're a little on edge. You did get a full rest. You went to bed early. No. You yeah. woke up. No. You just burned everything. No, you, got, you got the full rest. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we got six up. hours. Stupid o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry, thirsty, I need to be drunk. And where is... <laughs> Buddy, that's what I want to know. And we haven't seen well, Rebecca pipes up and says, no, "We haven't seen him. Um, we honestly don't know. I uh, just hope that whatever he's doing, it's for the better." Is he on the council, Buddy? Yeah. No. I'm asking this of the character. Ah, no, no, he's not a member. He sort of keeps to himself. Um, he's engaged in some, um, vigilante justice, uh, here and there. And the odd Billy Dabble of, um, dabbing into some petty theft and some other crimes. But for the most part, uh, we've let him be. Um, we have tried to lock him up once and he escaped within hours. So, uh, we tried to tie him up, he escapes again. He's... He, he proves to be one or two steps ahead of us uh, in the most part. Uh, but he has also done a couple of solids for uh, a couple of townsfolk here, and we respect that. Uh, for the most part, he causes us no trouble, so we've decided to leave him be uh, while that stays. Okay. Well, so do we tell them what's happened in the, uh, in the tower? I sheathe my sword and, you know, move to the back of the room and allow you to tell them. <laughs> but I keep an eye on everyone. <laughs> Alright, well, let's regale the what happened in the tower. Ah, so, do you want to retell it or you want to just bullet point that and say, I tell the story? Bullet point? It, it was like three months ago. Yeah, it was a while. <laughs> bullet point. Right. Yeah. I, I, I pull out my uh, my five slide deck, you know, get my little little camcorder going, and it's projecting on the and saying, "This is where we entered. This is where we nearly fell off the bridge. This is where we thought there was windows, but there was no windows. <laughs> and then there was a ghost. Turns out he was friendly. We were going to call him Casper. That wasn't his. And then he told us to go upstairs and kill things. The things upstairs nearly killed us. So I don't know if we like this ghost. But then he helped us out. And then he told us that he was actually dead, and yeah, well, we could tell he was dead. And then he gave us this stone. The end. And then one fell off the brig. Oh yeah, he did too. <laughs> they just take a step back, like ah, oh, um, that's fine and all. But did you did you find anything about what this this group, what this cult want, or what they're doing? I'm sure we did. But uh, I need I need some I need some motivation to remind me what. Chug thinks they were trying to steal souls for their magic experiment. Oh yeah, it was that one. And then you see the the two councilmen. They just sort of whisper and and, and just make a comment to each other. Uh, Ivan in in odds. Uh, she goes well. We've had reports of um, several wagons being pulled by ogres of caged civilians being pulled up towards the north. Um, we don't know what they're doing with these, but if, if you're saying they want to you know, steal their souls for some sort of nefarious purpose, then this is most dire. Yeah, they're using the souls to summon infernal beings into this world, I think. 
There is one less ogre. How many have you counted? Uh, I am myself am too frail to sort of go out. Um, I tend to Rebecca's protection. Uh, Rebecca sort of she pipes up. Um, she, she says we we need to make an effort to try and get these people back, uh, but we're stretched too thin as it is. Uh, she, I understand that you're already you know quite injured and quite tired, but could I ask that you prepare yourselves and go out? and try and find where they're being taken and report it back to us. I'm gonna need a healer. Yeah, yeah, you can see we're in a sorry, worn out state. What what can you offer us to help us get back up? Uh, just see. Like a wizard who can give me spell slots. In the, in the next room, we've, uh, we've, we've paid two gnomes to set up a makeshift alchemy lab. Uh, in, in anticipation of uh, many sort of battles and wounds, they're currently brewing up several healing potions. I believe they've already finished a batch of four. We can make them available to you. Uh, the next batch, however, will be dispersed amongst our guards to attempt to heal their wounds. Um, if you see them, just let them know that we have uh, decided to give you access to those. Uh, also, um, a priest from the temple and one of his priestesses are here as well, tending to the wounded. Uh, the rooms op opposite us uh, are actually set up with several makeshift beds with many wounded uh, civilians here and also wounded guard and they've been tending to them. Um, you could also ask him to perhaps look, take a look at your wounds and to, uh, to do something about that. However, he will charge a fee uh, as he insists as I have tried to get him to do it on his own, but he insists that he needs it for the temple. However, yeah, he'll charge a small fee for that. Did we make off with the money from the temple? We made off with half of it, I think, or a part of it, after Dodger got caught. Oh, he got totally caught, but he successfully bluffed the, the real amount that he took and only put a small amount back. Whereabouts was the temple on the map? So if you pull up, up the, the top map, uh, number two, it's up in the north where the ogres are going. Okay. Yeah. All I'm hearing is Dodrick, We need you to pull your CD ways and convince them. No, I'm just more of a uh, let, let's pay him to get healed while Dodrick pickpockets at the same. Come up with that. There we go. Rebecca, do we know where in the north they came from? No, no, we have not seen. Uh, most of us have fled and we've attempted to build a stronghold here above the river, using the river as protection. Uh, but we have not seen where they have been taking them. Um, a couple of the guards did report that they saw a couple of wagons being pulled in that direction. Uh, one did set out to try and find out, but he has not returned yet. Um, at the moment, our focus is trying to get everybody who we can here and safe, fortifying this space and then sending out a rescue party or a search party for those who are missing. Choke have more questions, but can't remember them. <laughs> so, Alchemy Lab? Let's get some red goodness. Okay. Does it look like there's anything valuable in this room? Uh, make a perception check. Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, this room has the beds missing. Uh, the, there's a couple of drawers, like uh, chest of drawers, set up against the wall, um, and. There's just a couple of tables in the center, scrawled out with paper and scribbled notes, what looks to be maps and um, sort of notes about where people are moving and, and what's going on. It, it's a war map, effect, effectively, with all sorts of notes. Uh, for the most part, this room is devoid of personal belongings, expensive belongings. Most of it, you believe, has been moved out of here into the other rooms for the, um, the wounded and such. At least that's your general gist of why this room is so naked. Uh, the actual... Okay. 
the councilman uh, dressed in pants and a uh, just a, a, a tunic there's no sort of gems or anything that sort of signifies wealth sort of hanging off them at the moment right. carry on um I quickly question. So you guys think there's a leak on the council? Who who do you think it could be? Is it one of you or are there other members? Oswald is the only other member that we know about. Um, we haven't really had much communication from him in the last week or so. We suspect that what he whatever he has been doing may be nefarious, but we don't, we don't know. Uh, and Liam pipes up and says, "Yeah, I hate to accuse my dad, but." We don't know. I haven't seen him either. I don't know whereabouts he is. Is Oswald the one that we saw was dead? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did we check his corpse? We did. If he was in the house that we walked by? No, I, thought uh, he... I know someone was dead, I... I just can't remember the name. Yeah, that was Oswald. What is intending to do? Hey. Asking him what he's intending to do himself while we're off him. Sorry, you're really muffled and you're hard to sort of hear. I ask Liam what he's intending to do with himself. I just want to stay here and assist him whatever way I can with the, the council. Attempt to step up where my father is missing and lacking at the moment. As a uh, wizard trainee, I think you should come help us. Uh, Yes, I can understand your viewpoint in that. Uh, I do know a few incantations and such, but nothing that's really battle ready or propose a force. So um, I, I would be better suited here where my magics and such would be better um, served protecting those here. I, I hear what you're saying, but my magics are not battle ready either. <laughs> you can roll it this way and check if you want. Uh, 19 plus 6, 25. 25. Oh. Uh, if, it, if it makes you feel better, I'll accompany you to the bridge, but I, I really don't, really don't want to set forth past it. You know, I would better serve to get in the way of anything. We, we might be able to help your father wherever he is, and if it turns out he's the traitor, you can help us persuade him. I think you should come. Great. He looks at Rebecca. No, you know, I'll, I'll come, but if I feel that it's too dangerous, I, I will be leaving. Uh, if there we can procure any items that are of use. Hey. You know where we can procure any items that may be of use? Uh, in, in what manner of items? Anything. Weapons. Shield. Magic items. I, all I could think of is dynamite. <laughs> is uh, perhaps throw it in the steel shop, but there's not much around here at the moment. Everything was effectively brought from the stockades to here. It's been worn or used. Oh, on that note, I get my crossbow and stuff back from the little kid. All right. Well, he's currently lost in the crowd somewhere. Does this mean I don't have a crossbow anymore? At the moment. Never hit anything with it. I uh, hit something once, maybe. Uh, Shut up. Fuzzy punched him with a tentacle. A young kid. What's an action? Alright, um, I say we begin doing all this stuff, like priesting and resting and stealing and potions. Slaying. Yeah, and then on to Ogre Slink. Daddy, we do all that. Uh, I, I want to ask Rebecca before we leave. Uh, is there any uh, footmen or people that you can spare to assist us? These ogres are uh, not going to be friendly. Uh, look, at the moment, I would prefer you to uh, not make a direct confrontation with what's going on, unless you feel that you can. But no, I really want to do a head count and find out who's missing and who's not. 
Uh, most of my men are severely wounded and require tending, including the group that come back with you. The majority of those have been suffering some horrible wounds. Uh, we want to get them tended to and, and really work on a plan to rotate uh, rotate them here so they're not too tired and that they can effectively defend us. As, as I said, I don't want to stretch us too thin and I know I'm asking a lot by asking you to go out. Okay. And just checking, we were... Um, we know that the cave's the entrance and we've got to go in there and defeat the evil, right? That's where they're all coming from, the cave at the back. The mine. Yeah, the mine. Um, I asked Rebecca, does she know a quick way we can get to the mine without being seen? That's key to our mission. Uh, you could attempt to move up the riverbank once you cross the, the road. Uh, that might be the quickest, quickest point. Uh, otherwise, just keeping off the main roads is probably the best part. Would she know where we can get a map of the mine? Uh, no, I, d I don't have that information, sorry. Cresses. Do you need to attune to the um, seer stones or the scrying stones or whatever they are? The the two way communicate. Uh, the stone descending. That one. Are you holding them at the moment? I have one. Dodrick still has the other one that he pickpocketed no, from Lee. I don't believe you do. No. Okay. I, I make it. I make a suggestion to uh, to Dodrick as he runs away. That uh, we give discreetly the uh, the other uh, the sending stone to Rebecca because if we're on the same page and we're suggesting that Liam is the traitor along with his father, maybe we have a way to communicate with her. You'll have to communicate that to Dodrick again. <laughs> How are you communicating that to me? We it, very fast. Well, we, we don't have to do it right now while we're in front of them. We're going to go see some alchemists and we're going to get some healing. Uh, I, I will suggest it when I notice that we are not in the room with them and they, they are not around. Okay. Okay. Are we leaving the room? Yep. yep. And we will get some sexual healing from the priests. <laughs> I thought we talked to the alchemists next door first, because they're like next door. Yes. Yeah, sounds good. Do it. Ah. Done. We go and get some potions. Cool. You bid everybody farewell, head out of the room, um, and enter the other room right next door. As you're entering, you, you can smell this sort of thick, uh, this sort of smoky mixture as you walk in. And it smells quite nice. Um, but you see two small... Uh, gnomes working pretty heavily amongst all this alch uh, alchemical uh, equipment. Um, as you barge in, they sort of startle and say, Oh, oh, uh, uh, I don't think you should be here. Uh, can, you, can you please leave? Please leave. No, we're here for potion. Oh, Rebecca here. says we're here. Oh, 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 oh. Re Rebecca sent you. Oh, oh okay. Uh, what is. She? Why has she sent you? We're uh, the heroes of this place. Hey. We're the heroes of this place. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hero. But uh, if, you, if you don't have anything, I'll ask you to please leave this. We're, you know, we're working very hard here. We don't need to be disturbed. We are told you I have approximately seven potions ready for it to take on our journey. <laughs> I'm going to get you to make a deception check. With pleasure. Uh, it's very good. It's a nine. A nine? <laughs> uh, no, we don't have seven potions. We have four. We have four ready. We have equipment we can only brew four at a time, and this is our batch. Ah, that'll yeah, have to do. What about your stash? We know you've got other potions as well. She said all of it. Everything. Everything you have. This is a life or death mission. Make a deception check. Being deceptive on the <laughs> truth. <laughs> uh, 16. 16. Um, 
No, no, we don't have anything else. This is it. We only set up two days ago. Like, this is all we've got. Uh, Judging by his look, is he lying? I get to make an insight. I'm not good at this one, guys. It's only plus five. So it's a 19. 19. Fucking hell, this is my best day of rolls I've ever had. <laughs> uh, no, he looks pretty straight. You know, feel that he's uh, being overly deceptive. In fact, you feel that he's been rather panicky after being um, forked in on. Why would he be panicky? Well, you couldn't know that, to him. Ooh, well, I ask him, why do you me? seem so uneasy? Because we're, we're working in here. Rebecca, um, she told us that we could set up here. She told us that we would not be disturbed. And, well, we're being disturbed. And we really... Well, we, we sort of know why now. But, you know, a, a nice knock on the door could have been you know, more polite, maybe. But Do you realise uh, the town outside is burning yes, to the ground? Yes, People are dying. It's, it's burning. And it's, that's why we don't want... Just anybody walking in. Could you imagine if the townsfolk found out that we're brewing potions here? They could get panicky. We're keeping this on the down low, okay? No, Why would got... they get panicky about potions? They got, I, I don't know. We've got loved ones that are wounded, perhaps, and they feel that they're not getting treated correctly, or maybe they... Are feel... these really health potions, or are you working with the ogres to make poison potions? No, no, these are health potions, don't be absurd. Yeah. Okay. One, I think you're under something. These, these gnomes, they're not being straight with us. No, they're being quite short with us, actually, and I'm not one a fan. The, one of the gnomes, he just sort of stamps his feet and, yeah, I'll, I'll fix this. And he walks out of the room. A moment later, he comes back with Rebecca. Like, what is the meaning of this? Like, these, the other gnome, the, these people just barged in. She's like, yes, yes, I told him. You can give them the four health potions you had for Like, oh, oh, well. They were being rather, you know, shirt fronty. Uh, okay, here. And he walks over the back and he picks up a vial canister and there's four red vials in it. He comes out and he pops them on the table and goes, here, these are for you. Um, now, if you don't mind, Rebecca, can you please get these people out? We, we need to keep working. Um, yes. While he's doing that whole song and dance, yeah. I, out of my pack, pull out some of my ghoul fingers that I've been saving, right? And I go... I walk over to the alchemy station. And I'm like, hmm. hmm, and I act like I'm picking up some ghoul fingers. I go, what do you need these for? These look like the fingers we've been finding in the the mines and all that. Blah blah blah. And in the tower, these look like ghoul fingers to me. Okay, and make a I look at them. hand check. Shit. And exception check. Uh, Um, 19 plus 3 for sleight of hand. This is my best day. Come on, Deception. <laughs> Watch me flop it right in. Oh, 4 plus 6. That's 10 on Deception. Uh, they look baffled as to where the ghoul fingers come from. and But they stand their ground and, no, we haven't been using ghoul fingers. We don't know where they come from. For all we know, you've just put them there while we were talking. Rebecca has strictly provided us with the materials here when we have not left this room. Are you accusing me and us, the heroes of this town? Uh, yes. Yes, Rebecca, look, this is getting rather ridiculous. Can you make these people leave? We don't want to see them again. Chuck, thank you for the potion, the little alcos. <laughs> and then he pushes one out of the room. I walk up to Rebecca and I hand her that communication stone and I just glare at her and say, yours for now, and then walk away. Okay. <laughs> Rebecca just sort of gives everybody a stern look. You know, it's early in the morning, her patience is starting to be tested. She takes the stone gratefully though. She follows all four of you back out of the room and she stops. Please. Look, I understand it's a tense situation, but I can't have you going around and accusing everybody with no... With no evidence. Like, this is madness. Well, well, like what do you mean, no evidence? We uncovered the traitor on the council that no, you already knew about. No evidence and about... we found ghoul fingers. Yes, yes, you found ghoul fingers. Yes, thank you. There's no ghoul fingers in there. You planted that. That is deceitful. I will not have that for members of my town guard. You can't prove it. 
Choke <laughs> shoves one because he knows better. <laughs> now, you have your potions. Go see the priest, get some rest, and go and find my people. Are the other council people around her at the moment? No, it's just her. The other the door's closed. She's come out on her own. Does she uh, indicate that she knows what the stone is? Um, no, she seems unfazed. She's just holding it. She's unsure why she has it. Okay. Uh, then maybe we tell her. Do you reckon? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please. Whatever you do next, you know, do it with less accusations. And she leaves you guys, walks back into her little uh, office here, or war room, and closes the door. Guys, I say we kill the gnome. <laughs> no. Alright, fine. Let's I go to the church. I'm sick of talking to these people. Say anything. Right. So, so, the far two rooms, the doors are open. Um, and inside, you can see a yeah, the elderly dwarf, which was the, the priest of the Temple of Skadi, uh, the Doderick that you and everybody else met. Um, a few days ago um, and you see one of his priestesses which is a uh, sort of a half elven um, you know, middle aged girl you know, not, not by elven standards um, she's young but to you uh, quite old and they're all sort of tending to everybody at the moment uh, you notice you take a, a pause you notice and you watch the priest walk over to uh, one of the the sick or the wounded on the on one of the beds, and he places his hand on their shoulder. Um, his hand glows with a white light, and the, the stem of the bleeding and the wound, or the stem of the bleeding stops, and the wound begins to close. One you recognise this magic. He's casting kill wounds. I congratulate him on his good casting. He so sort of stands up. Oh, you're here for, to give us a hand. Oh, I wish, sir. I am out of spell slots. I might just stand outside the room and listen in for the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so if you're not here, what, what would you like of me? I asked for some nice heels. Well, all of us. Three. He takes a look at you and goes, well, look at the three of you. It's oh, been, a, been a scuffle. Um, I hope you gave the others a bit of one-two, I suppose. And he sort of starts to get a bit of a, a bit of action and sort of jumps up on his feet and shuffles a little bit, like, almost like a boxer. He sort of smiles a little bit with this playful energy sort of coming out. Um, he goes, oh, yes, yes, I can offer some, some healing services. Um, I can cast Cure Wounds. Uh, on each of you, and it'll be 10 gold each. Whoa. I, I say to him, well, there was one big guy that was uh, facing us, but it's all Ogre now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, good, good. Um, actually, oh, uh, and his face just goes a bit so sort of tired. She goes, didn't see uh, one of my priestesses out there, did you? And she made it back. Um... And she points over, he points over to his uh, assistant and she's wearing sort of a long glowing white robe um, yeah, with a, a white hood that sort of comes up and covers most of her face and most of her hair as well. I say we brought back many, many people. Um, they could have been in the crowd. We literally brought a crowd back. I can't recall, to be honest. Neither can I. Uh, well, I'm, I'm worried. Uh, she ran back to the temple as we were trying to escape. Uh, we heard that the, uh, whoever's attacking this town were making their way towards us. One of the guard came and warned us and told us to leave. So we packed our things and we left. We got halfway down the road and she turned back and, and ran back claiming that she forgot something. Uh, we didn't follow her regretfully. Uh, we tried to get her to say, you know, it's just a material possession, it doesn't matter, but she wouldn't have any of it, and she bolted back for it, and I haven't seen her. I'm sort of hoping that she gets back safely. If you do see oh. her, please bring her back. If 
we'll be heading up that way. So, you know, if we have a little bit of extra health each, we can most definitely see to it. Okay, well, as I said, 10 gold each. A donation to the church for my service. A stealth into the room. <laughs> I need you to make a stealth check. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. So mosey in. Um, you managed to carefully conceal yourself as he's sort of talking with everybody, and he doesn't take too much notice of you. Uh, I request the healing services and pay my ten gold. Okay. I I also hand over ten. Golds. As does Chug. Okay. Alright, each gain seven hit points. Is that it? Fucking hell, he's the worst healer. Yeah, it was worth it for me. <laughs> Any other heals? Hey. Anyone else getting heals? So, Chug, Lefner, and One have all regained seven hit points. I'm gonna cast Mage Hand and try and pickpocket him. Okay. Uh, I'll get you to make a sleight of hand check, please. Non natural 20. You go through his pockets and. Um, your hand grabs something, it pulls it out, uh, you're not sure what it is yet, and you sort of bring your hand carefully back to you, open it up, and it's a, a vial of red liquid. Worth. I make myself known and walk up towards him and I'm like, hey, I'd like some of those heals as well. Mm, you, I remember you. Uh, if you want to heal, 15 gold for you. You know what you did. I, I did nothing. I hand him the 15 gold and ask for my healing. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you get 6 points of healing. I only needed 3. <laughs> Alright, I go to walk out of the room and I give him a little bit of a shove to the side and uh, attempt to pickpocket him again. <laughs> Roll sleight of hand. Thirteen. Thirteen. As you do so, you, your hand goes into his other pocket, and he just catches your hand. It goes in. Is see, sir, you have not learnt your lesson. He sort of throws your hand away. I think you, it's best that you all leave now. Spartan so, kick him down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's okay. Junk change. <laughs> Alright. Ready? You're uh, finished there. Head back down the stairs. Uh, yeah, the room still as crowded as it, as it was. Um, and where are you headed? To the bar! Yeah, to the bar to rest for one hour, yeah. exactly. You've left the room to get your supplies, Liam is not with you. At the moment, he stayed in the room. So oh yeah. Point. We've got an hour of rest we need to do to get left of his spell slots. Oh yeah. Without that, we're fucked. Like, at least some small sauces, but then no <laughs> So, yeah, we do that at the bar with nice mead. Okay. Sure. But not enough to get drunk, just, you know, the good the good kind with the heels. Enough to get excited. No worries. All right, all, all four of you sit down at the bar and you rest for an hour, take you know, a couple of beverages. Uh, a bit of food that's sort of going around to everybody at the moment. 
uh, and you'll complete a short rest. So anybody who wants to roll some hit die, you can roll those. I think if you roll one, you get a bonus 1d6 because I am there. Enjoy. Hey, that's pretty oh, man. Pretty. So what do, how do I do the short rest? Because we haven't actually done this before. So click on the short rest button. Yeah. You get to go. You tick one of the hit die. Or however many you want to do. Yep. Um, you get, I think, a charge back each long rest, is it? Daddy? You get you yeah. get half of your level back, I think. So you guys up being level four, you should get two hit hit die back on a long rest. Yeah, and then because I'm there, I have a feat uh, not a feat, but a feature. Um if you or any friendly creatures who can hear your performance regain hit points at the end of a short rest by spending one or more hit dice, each of those creatures gains an extra 1d6. So anyone that can hear me gets a bonus 1d6. Okay. So mine's a 1d8 plus 1, and then I add a 1d6 to that as well. That's if you're spending yep. 1. If you want to spend 2, 3d8 twice. I, I should be Okay. Um, um, I shall spend a few hit dice. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Can we over here? No. You can't gain temporary hit points. <laughs> unless you buy a direct spell. Uh, I think a, a bit of the necromancy magic gives you a lot of temporary hit points. Damn it. I went two over. I have the full health. I'm on 30. So I healed 13. Because my hit dies 1d10 plus 2, then plus Apple's d6, which gave me another 2. Nice. Um, did that take us to dawn yet? Yes. It's now dawn. So any items that recharge, they recharge now. Ooh. Um, I look around to see if I can find the kid. Alright, uh, roll perception. Um, and I obviously ask around if anyone's seen a child with a crossbow. <laughs> Fuck me, it's only a seven. Uh, plus, what was it? Perception. Uh, plus three, so ten. that you ask at the moment sort of recognises uh, the description that you're giving. I've lost my crossbow, guys. <laughs> Alright, I keep a look at while we... Uh, we're going to go see uh, the fella. We need to get Liam. We yeah, yeah. drag him along for the fun. Alright. You head back up and grab Liam. Um, then, sorry, where are you headed? To the bridge. The bridge, right. You grab him, um, yeah, and head towards the bridge. For the most part, um, a, a lot of the uh, fighting and such across the town has sort of died down. You don't hear the screams and the, um, all the commotion and such, which you were familiar with, you know, an hour or so ago as the sun sort of rises over the mountain um, and casts light over the town everything sort of quietens down a bit um, at the bridge there's uh, four guard sort of standing watch um, two armed sword and shield and two armed with um, some heavy crossbows just standing further back um, and one sort of up on a bit of a perch to get some higher ground as well uh, they see you coming and they sort of just nod in your direction uh, as you get to the bridge, they caution you about what you might find across. You know, just be careful. Um, but they let you pass. Um, I ask if there's been many raids. Been many raids? Yeah, as in, have they been attacked much? Or has it died down, like, at the bridge? Uh, because I just took this, po uh, this post about 15 minutes ago. Uh... Mm. The person who I overtook, yeah, he said that they had attacked the bridge uh, a couple of times during the night. However, a band of adventurers had 
sort of helped them when things got really, really meaty. There's a little couple of uh, very hellish dogs sort of, you know, breathing fire and such. So they're, yeah, they'll put down with your help. But with, with their help, he hasn't, hasn't put together this, you guys. Uh, but Jug puts his hand on the guard's shoulder and says, Don't worry, we kill Ogre so you don't have to. <laughs> he's just sort of, he, he's a bit cautious about this half orc coming and invading his personal space. And, but he sort of, after the, the immediate shock, he sort of smiles and he goes, oh, Well, thank you. Thank you. I really don't want to have to um, bout with one of those ogres that have been walking around. If you put one down, then. I'll buy you a drink next time we're at the tavern together. Eat. There's more oh. ogres, guys! <laughs> so are we just gonna try and plow through, or do we wanna like stealth up the river or behind this building, the U shaped building? And then straight. What do you guys reckon? Are we gonna go to the temple to try and see if that chick's there? We can sort of do that going in between buildings around the U-shaped building. If we do that, don't we have to kind of lug her around the entire way? Or we have to make our way back and then all the way back? Well, we essentially clear a path on the way there. She can run back. I mean, i got a feeling she's dead. And I just want those white robes. Well, she's turned and she's got some magic something going on. Alright, let's do that. Dodger, you're leading the way. All right, elite. I follow Chug. at a distance. So you just... Chug whistles to see if Mustang Sally arrived. <laughs> so you just heading up the road towards the temple, just main road, not stealthy. Uh, not main road. Main road, not stealthy. Okay. March then. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> Got uh, ready, small. I'll roll twenty. Uh, so we forgot to ask the priestess's name. So on the map, I've just placed where you guys are. Um, so. Now, sorry, you're actually just after the bridge there. Now, are you going to walk along the river behind the mansion? Or are you going to follow the road, the main road around and then sort of branch off? Like, what is your... If, if you could sort of trace me the path that you guys want to take. Alright, temple's number two. Um, Sorry, I'll be two minutes. I'm I'm just going with the group. Yeah. Well, we want to be bold and go the main road, or sneaky go the river. What do you? Got? I think that way. Sneaky. <laughs> oh, All right. I don't like that big scribbly way. Let's go on the river. Yeah. How do you undo your paint? You have to select tool and select it. Yeah. So where are we going? Dodrick, you draw. Ooh. Like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, wait, when we get to here, I want to have a look around and see if we can see anything here or here. Okay. Yep. So you want to look around behind the, the mansion there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, when you get across the bridge, um, you're about to make your way up past the right hand side of the mansion. Uh, Liam sees the body on the ground in front of the mansion and realizing who it might be he runs over to have a look uh, he sort of gasps a little bit when he sees that it is in fact his dad and sort of pauses and stands looking over him 
Um, he then screams back to you guys, because can you please get one of the guards to come and, and give me a hand? Uh, just found my deceased father. Um, Liam, he, he'll still be there later. We've got many more people to save right now. I know it hurts, but we, we have to continue. It's for the good of your town that you want to save. Make a persuasion check. God damn it. Oh, fuck yeah, today is great. Um, persuasion. Uh, 25. It was, I can't quite hit a 20 on my rolls. <laughs> he, he looks at you and, uh, I suppose you're right, but he does backtrack across the bridge and have a word to one of the guards. Um, you see he hit the guard nod and he makes his way across the bridge with, um, uh, one of the other guards. Um, and they go and collect the body and begin to move it back to the other side of the river. Yeah, you guys sort of continue on around along the river's edge. Uh, it is steep. The, the fence or the side of the house is built on a stone slab right up onto the river's edge, and the embankment sort of drops down pretty steeply after that. Um, so it takes you a little bit to get past, uh, but you do manage to do so. Um, when you get to your point uh, one, I'll get you to make a perception check as you check around the back of the mansion. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Troop movements and, you know, just on guard for all the ogres and if I can see where they're going, what they're doing over this end. Right, I'll get you to make Swords left in stone. Let me check for tracks. Hey? Any swords left in the stones? That was a crit. It finally <laughs> happened. Guys, I'll just roll everything today. It's the only day I can roll. It's not like my crossbow days. It turns out the crossbow is bad juju. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want it anymore. Um, you, you check around. There are no tracks behind the, the mansion here. Um, you, you, you sort of check the mansion, sort of backs onto a bit of an open garden. Um, you walk through. But for the most part, the garden seems undisturbed. That was the worst group roll I've ever had. <laughs> Can we hear any screaming or see any fires? Uh, make a perception check. Uh, what's 18 plus? One. 19. I thought you got a one for a second. <laughs> um, you have a look around you don't hear any screaming but you do see a thick black pillowing uh, smoke coming from the north and is that sort of directly north to where we are maybe uh, north it's not directly north no, it's not true north to you it's okay. probably a little bit slight on the northwest but it's coming towards the north Is it within the town limits kind of distance, or...? Uh, yes, you would believe so. We need to move out of the... Oh, we can move the dude. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you all continue on. Uh, continue moving around. Can I get everybody to make... Are you, sorry, are you just... Are you being stealthy? I'm assuming by taking this path, you are being stealthy. Very sure. Alright, I'll get everyone to make a stealth check, please. Fuck. Oh, and if someone would like to make one for Liam. Um, I got a 12, and someone else can roll Liam's because my rolls are now out of luck. I think Dodrick should totally roll for Liam. <laughs> I got a 23. I got 19. I got a 4. <laughs> and he's not lucky. So, as you guys continue along your little path along the, the bank's edge, Liam loses his footing and slides straight down and splashes into the water. Um, and he's sort of splashing around, like, <gasps> and he's just panicky for a second and he sort of grabs onto the bank. He's like, please, 
please help. Um, uh, I'm not the best swimmer. And his, you can see he's lost his feet and the, the depth of the water continues almost very sharply straight down. Um, he's trying to pull himself up and he just can't at the moment. Jug reaches for him. Can I get you to make an athletics check? Yeah, I'm good at them. Uh, 24. 24. Cool. You've reached down. You, know, you carefully make your way down the, the steep terrain. You find a footing that's solid. And you reach down and grab him and pull him out of the water. Um, now, it's heavy. He's, you know, his clothing is full of water now. So as you pull it up, he's a lot heavier than what he was. But still, you do it with ease. You drag him out, push him up on the shore. And he's now sopping wet and freezing cold. Who do you think she's doing? And he's like, I told you that I shouldn't have come with you. I cast Prestidigitation and slightly warm him. Yeah. He sort of gets like a, an odd sensation. Nevertheless. Actually, he's living. I can't warm him. Oh, I, yeah. I dry him. Slightly on just one patch because it's not very good. Well, you can cast it over and over, I think, can't you? Yeah. You can work on him and just generally dry him. Yeah, but that'll be loud. Does it make a sound? Uh, it has a verbal and semantic component. Yeah. Well, we already failed the stealth check. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, you're right. Cool. I just, you know, start casting. And I slowly dry him over time. Okay. However much time you did. you start to do it, he also starts doing the same thing and casting and, and moving it away. All right, good job. Cool. That 23 was worth it for you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, what else? All right, you continue on. Nothing else seems to be... Um, arc enough for making or disturbing the area that you're in. Uh, so you continue along your little marked path there. We don't hear anything, no carts. Mm, you can make a perception check to try and listen as you go. Uh, 16. 16. Um, from where you are, no, you can't hear anything at the moment. Now, going where your position is on the map, just on the, the bank's edge. Press on. Alright, I get you to move your little token off. Charge. Alright, so. As you guys get to the main road, even though it's a good, you know, 100 to 200 meters away at the moment, or several hundred feet. Um. You see one of the wagons just in the distance just sort of disappear and it's heading towards the north. You just caught the edge of it as you come around the corner. So what are the wagons see? for? They're carrying people. As in like captured people? Yeah, for their soul machine because they're trying to spawn demons, remember? Should they we, sacrifice should we do souls? something? I throw the Chuck, half go again. I pick up the half minute and I throw him at the cart. <laughs> <laughs> Make the athletics check. Oh, do shit. You really I'm assuming, uh, do, you, do you resist Doderick? No. No? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow you to get your daggers already first. Short swords, ready. Go. I'd like to assist somehow with the aerodynamics. <laughs> uh, 18. 18. You pick up Doderick and throw him a whole 10 feet. <laughs> Doderick just sort of More pulls himself up. Not quite sure what is going to happen. And you just, <laughs> just sort of peg him with all of your strength. You're actually surprised by the distance that you managed to throw this... Um, 
and there's this sort of child that like of a human. You clearly but need breakfast. Did not go that far. So, whereabouts can you mark on the map where we saw the car? Ah, okay, sure. So, I got my little brush tool. So, that red dot. All right. I'd like to just immediately get up and like dash and try and like get ahead of where I think it'll be. So I'd be down. Something like that. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to try and do it in a, a stealthy as I can. Okay. I get to make a stealth check with disadvantage going at the speed that you're wanting to go at. So as he does that, can we create like a, so he's going to try and get around up and behind. If we create some noise to try and bring him back this way, is that what you're aiming for? So you can get in and stealth and stab him in the spine? I was going to like try and intercept the cart and stealthily like buckle the wheel or something to stop him. Oh yeah, nice. You do that. You do you. I got 11. 11. Thanks to your disadvantage. Thanks for that. <laughs> you make your way very, very quickly. You see Doderick just sort of dash um, carefully, but making good, quick speed. Uh, but as you sort of run through a few of the brush and such, you snap a few twigs and, and make a bit of a sound as you as you move along. Uh, now you other three, you just, just watching him do it, or? Go girl out to create another distract. Hey, miss two. And I sort of slightly push one and left now forward. I, I raise my hands as if, you know, oh, I sheathe my short swords and then I put them under my cloak so they can't be seen. And I raise my hands as if I'm a prisoner. Me too. I sort of stumble forward with my hands up like, okay, okay, I'm gone. <laughs> All right. So you guys start moving along. Um, Doderick, it takes you, a, you know, a, a good couple of minutes to sort of get to where you need to. Uh, when you get there, I guess you make a wisdom save, please. And you said wisdom save. Yes. Does that mean plus two? Um, yeah. Two. No. Plus one plus for some one. reason. Yeah, so it's one. 19. 19. Uh, you get there, and there is two of the massive armored ogres pulling a cart in the distance. The one has got over one shoulder, the other one's got over another shoulder, and this cart is huge, bigger than the other ones that you've encountered at the moment. On the back of it, you can see several um, cages, uh, a number that you can't quite, um, you can't quite come together with, just the way that they're stacked, they're all different sizes, and because of the iron bars, it's hard to sort of see how many cages deep or high. Um, you do see a good amount of people in these cages. Uh, and you see several of the cultists on top of the wagon, one of which is staring right at you with his finger pointed at you. Uh, I'm going to keep a dagger immediately at the guy that's pointing at me and try and get him like right between. Okay, get you to make an attack roll. Sixteen. Sixteen. You throw the dagger and it flies well and truly towards his head. The guy with his finger out just waves his hand and this barrier of energy just appears right as the, uh, the dagger would strike him and sort of deflects it and pushes it away with his hand. And um, he says, ah, no, not so fast. Um, and the, the two other, there's two other cultists down at the bottom of the wagon, like still on it, but he's staying on top of the cages. I'm quite tall, uh, and they both wave their hands um, and mutter some sort of incantation right when both of your legs start to freeze over. And can I get you to make a dexterity saving throw, please? Twelve. Twelve. Uh, both feet get frozen and 
are frozen to the ground and you are rooted. You cannot move. Damn it. <laughs> now the wagon, uh, the guy on the top goes, Hut! and the, the ogres just start you know, jogging. Like They were walking before, but now they're picking up speed and moving into a run. And they start bolting towards um, the cave wall up the back. Like a solid wall. So, sorry, I'll move everybody to where uh, where you guys are, just so you know. So, oops, that's not what I want to do. So, we're following the wagon, correct? So, Doderick, you're up here. Uh, do I have a wagon? Maybe I've got a little wagon. I thought I had one. Tent, horse. Uh, Alright, I'll just use the horse icon. Where is he? Oh, it's all, all weird. The horse is too fat to take the streets, it has to take the long way around. Hey, one of you guys delete the other, your, your person icon? Where do you go? I may have. <laughs> I deleted my drawing of the wagon. I didn't realize it was me. Can you undo? No, there's no undo. Uh, um, I don't know how to bring it back. Uh, Control Z does nothing. No. You can just have the little guard icon there. I think that better represents us anyway. So the wagon's gone up between the two houses there and is now heading towards the edge of the wall. Um, should we just run at it and ambush? Okay, Doderick's a fair bit fair way ahead. Uh, by the time you three arrive, so you're well, Dodder, you see the um, the cart run up towards the wall, uh, and it vanishes through the wall, uh, right when Lifter, Dodder, sorry, Lifter, Chug, and One, you catch and see Dodder with both of his legs and Liam as well, both his legs frozen into the ground. How do we melt his feet? I light a torch. <laughs> Can, uh, I pre is it like frozen water? Because I can warm it. <laughs> sure, yeah, we'll try and warm it. I attempt to warm it. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I breathed in the water. <laughs> You're not meant to do that, Daddy. That's No, true. no. Yeah. Especially think... after one has just warmed it up. After years of human evolution, I wouldn't have to think about not having to do that, but apparently I do. Uh, you you check the, um, the frozen lakes, I suppose. And yeah, it does appear to be actual water. Cool. I attempt to press the to take his feet warm. Okay. It starts. You can start seeing the, the liquid start to flow and, and move. Chug, break this. <laughs> does uh, Liam know any spells that may be of use? Uh, Liam, yeah, walks up and... So it starts to manipulate the torch that Doderick has and moves the flames and starts to make them swirl around the, the ice. It melts them. You could have done that, Ladna. I could have, but I wanted him to be useful for once. <laughs> <laughs> and spell slots are expensive. It, it's a it's a cantrip, but it's fine. Oh, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what his capabilities are. So yeah, it, it, it maneuvers it. Uh, you want to see his capabilities? Uh, you do make an arcana check as you oh, okay. observe Liam. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, 23. 23. You can tell that he, well, he, he knows the technique. He's still working at it. As the flames sort of move around Dodrick's legs, they sort of lick off and become you know, little uncontrolled parts as he sort of mistakenly moves the, the flames around. For the most part, he does a good job, but it's not the expert... Uh, a way that you yourself would have 
maneuver that as well. Does that mean Doderick no longer has hair on his legs? No, there is still hair. On my feet? <laughs> the hobbits have hairy feet. Are his magical boots still intact? After a couple you of minutes, you burn it off. It grows back straight come, away. Come loose, Doderick, and you can now move again. Woo! Guys, the cart went through a wall. Nice. It's an illusion. Jug will go for a roar. Before we go in there, should we check the temple? We're here. It's sort of outrunning us, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I pressed to digitate. Well, actually. Hey, whereabouts did it go into the wall, I ask? I point and I I press the digitate a cross onto the wall there. Just a little one that I can see. Okay. Just so we can come back to it. Sure. I think it lasts an hour, maybe. That smoke that we saw before, is that sort of the temple or is it Yes, it is coming from the temple. Oh god. Shall we dash to the temple? Yes. Yeah. Alright, so you guys, yeah, hastily make your way towards the temple. Um, it is largely on fire. Uh, the bell tower itself is engulfed in flames. Uh, the front of the building, however, seems mostly untouched by the flames. You just see that most of it is concentrated at the back of the, the temple. Uh, given that this is mostly a stone structure with some wooden beams and, and such for support, um, the fire is not spreading terribly quickly, but it is spreading. Um, yeah, so the front entrance is, is safe from the flames. I suggest Liam and Wallet guy head in, left up, head in to control the flames. Yeah, I'm I'm good for that. I'll I'll teach him how he does it, how to do it. Okay, yeah. Uh... Uh, Liam's like, it is really you want me to go first? No, no, no. We we go same time. We're just controlling the flames. We're we're dying it down. We're putting it out. Okay, so he he looks a bit uneasy, but he nods at your reassurance and takes a big breath and walks up to the door and pushes it open. And it, it opens freely. The door is actually just slightly ajar. Um, yeah, and push it open with your help. Inside, you can see the temple. Uh, it has been ransacked. The pews that were lined, um, the, you know, the praying space is all sort of tipped and pushed aside. Um, one of the stacks of, like, there's been a, a pile of pews made by somebody, and they're all sort of just tipped on each other, and they've been set alight, and you can see that that's perhaps where the flame has originated from and where the rest of the building has caught fire, and that's deep up towards the back. Um, at your feet, as you open the door, you can see the robes of a white priestess, which is now stained red, uh, laying on the ground. Uh, investigate for signs of life. All right, make a medicine check. Oh, I'm good at this. Uh, fine. Five. Yeah. Uh, she's stone cold. I check her pockets. One. Press the digitation there to make her warm. It might help. <laughs> I, I do what the wizard says. <laughs> Start warming the, the, the body. Uh, left, uh, sorry, Dodrick, you push uh, the others aside and just quickly start ruffling through her hands. And, uh, I, and I curiously... Pockets. It's odd that the spell worked. It shouldn't work on living material. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, sorry, I don't know the, the spell is not, but not the body. Hey, that's a, that's a good way to check, yeah, right? Yeah, rather yeah. than oh, rather yeah. than doing oh, these oh, medicine no, checks. That. That's true. Chug uh, walks further into the building to see if he can hear anyone else. All right, I'll get you to make a perception check, Chug. Uh, Doderick, as you sort of ruffle through the pockets and such, uh, you just fire and. Uh, a small pouch with a few silver pieces, um, seven silver pieces, uh, and you also find uh, a necklace uh, with a cross. Pocket six. And six. You just hear the fire sort of raging in the background. Uh, Liam, he's a bit taken aback from the, the deceased priestess, but 
he, he's seen a bit of death today and sort of just sadly sighs and moves towards the back and starts to manipulate the flames and snuff them out. So we're convinced the priestess is dead. Uh, so that is check and yes, yeah. Choke goes out. Anyone here? Don't get a response. I look for valuables. Okay. Get to make an investigation check. Ten. Ten. You go through a couple of the rooms, uh, all the drawers and uh, anything that was, you know, storage boxes and the like are all open and sp sprayed out everywhere. This place has been ransacked. Uh, even the collection box, which you return to. Yeah. See, in a in a temple or church, you go to like the main pillar, where they have like a cross up the back that everyone can see, and then you check the floor, right? And there's probably like a little trap door of some sort. That's where they store all their goods. So I want to have a look over. You want to have a look for them. Um, right. yeah. You go through a, a small, yeah. A look for trap doors or hidden floors or anything like that, but you don't find any. Bunch of peasants in this town. <laughs> they are a, a simple, a simple people. You um, already looted them. One thing that you do notice, uh, that, sorry, that you will all have noticed, oh, sorry, Doderick, is that she was holding a cross, uh, and this is not the symbol for this particular god. Uh, this is the temple of Tuscati, which is the god of the mountain. What symbol would they have? You're unsure. You haven't, so you don't sort of recognize this symbol. Oh, I know him. I went to the, Warlocks. You know, uh, Christianity and such doesn't really exist in this particular world so it, it's not a symbol that you recognize or it's not a crucifix so so to speak interesting i guess i show it to the others and say does anyone else know what this is and would anyone know i have a look and try and figure it out you should make a religion check Yeah, I don't work in. I got a two plus uh, one. Can I assist? Yep. One, you can roll again. Oh, that's a silly idea. You should roll on your own. You should have a good religion. <laughs> I got a five plus one, six. Six. No. I have run out of rolls, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you go back through, you have a good think, but no, you haven't recognized this symbol before. I assume that counts for both of us. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. At this point, Liam sort of comes back. You know, most of the flames have died out. And he said, oh, I think I've saved what I can. Uh, it can't, he looks up. I can't do much about the bell tower up there. It's out of sort of my reach. I can't see what I'm manipulating. But uh, the flames should be enough that... It'll preserve what's left of the building. You'll do good, you little one. <laughs> do you recognize that symbol? He looks at it and goes, oh, no, no I haven't. You're improving my um, paddle. <laughs> Alright. Anything else here worth doing? Chug kneels behind the, beside the priestess and closes her eyes, he takes out his own cross and says a little prayer for her. You wear a cross, do you, Chuck? I don't wear it, I have one. Right. As my holy symbol. Shall we go? Yep. Cool. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. Do you want to leave it here? Do you want to keep going? Well, it's a month away, so... <laughs> Depends. Are we going to get in a fight it? now? It's probably a good point to, to stop, I think. 
I was going to say, probably the next thing we're doing is going to the cave, getting into a fight that's 10.30, and then we'll take an hour oh, or two of, to get To be honest, most of your fights take an hour to an hour and a half. Compared to you guys, so okay. So, you'd be, yeah, 11, 11.30. If there's a fight. Would have been a lot quicker if the uh, halfling landed. <laughs> right. Well, I think, uh, yeah, call it there then. Yeah. Cool. Ah, good job. Nice. So where are you going, Apples? Europe. I'm going to France, then Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, and Italy. Nice. I know. My sister's in Austria at the moment. I shall technically pass through Austria while on a train. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I get to, in Germany, I get to go on the Autobahn in a Mercedes. Cool. So that'll be fun. How are you going on um, one of the bullet trains, or the high-speed trains? I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there's many trains I will be on. I assume one of them will be fast. That'd be awesome. I want to go on yeah. super fast ones. Oh, I'll go to Japan no, no. for that. I've yeah, same. That. It's amazing. They are so good. Yeah, and it's oh, so like smooth. Yeah. How yeah, good are they? Okay. The ones in China use the crash a lot, and they're like, yeah, I think they did something like 350, and they, they said since we slowed them down to 300, they don't crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went on them in Japan and they were so insane. Like, we got the luxury seats and you just sit there. You don't even realize you're moving that fast until you try and actually look at something at the wall. And you're like, well, no, that's a blur. You gotta look in the distance. Yeah, I, I wanna go on one. Our, like, sad 50 kilometer an hour train is just not the same. That's when it works. It's up to four hours to get to Melbourne. Actually, it was quicker last time because it actually broke down and they put me on the bus. <laughs> so uh, I got paid for a train ticket. Nope, uh, get on the bus. Uh. It's horrible. <laughs> Every time I get on it, it's just, it's so crowded. There's so many people on there. I think it used to be four hours, and I think they cut out a few stops to sort of bring it down to three and a half. But... Yeah, I think it took three and a half hours to get home. Yeah. That's silly. Crazy. Ah, did I tell you all I got a new job? Do you want to know? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Westpick. So nice. It's one of the companies I contract for. So have you Sweet. given your notice for your resources yet, or? Yeah. So uh, when do you officially start? Uh, my last day at your resources is Friday the 13th. <laughs> Solid. Okay. Are you taking a week off in between? No, uh, I'll be starting, but I am taking a week and a half off. Uh, end of September, start of October. Okay. Or Guess you're doing that leave without pay since you're just starting. Yeah, but I'll get the uh, the leave pay with um, air resources, so that'll be like that'll cover the, the leave anyway. Yeah, no. Will it feel weird sort of walking into your new job that's really your old job? I don't see. That's the funny thing. I don't think it will um, <laughs> because I've already been there. The weirdest part was the um, selection process because they were like 110% by the book to the point where I was trying to. You know, gauge on clues to see how well I'm progressing or whatnot, and they effectively stopped all contact with me aside from hey, I need to do this task for it. But I was thinking, I'm not getting it. <laughs> like it was morbid. It was really quite, um, quite dark. <laughs> so I was like, no, I, I haven't got this. They've found someone better or whatnot. Or perhaps that one stuff up that I did two years ago has been enough to decide that you know they don't want me they want some fresh blood <laughs> fresh ideas
Well, that, yeah, that'll, that'll I assume that'll mean less travel. More travel, actually. Oh. Uh, part of the reason, yeah, why they were wanting it to be hired was um, I'll go full time. And this is the big kicker: was I went to Ballarat, uh, which turned out to be a full day job, and then I come back and said, "All right, I need to pay my time to the other company on that." Um, and you know, I can't come in the next day because you know, you took half a day from them, so I've got to pay it back to them. So they get a full day tomorrow. And they had a couple yeah, of things okay. go wrong, and they were basically like, you know, this isn't sustainable, we can't keep doing this. We need, uh, you know, somebody here full time. And like, they want to see them, you know, go to Melbourne or whatever, and go there a couple of days, and they can't do that with the current arrangement with me, so they want to hire. Fair enough. So they can just pay you daily plus whatever, a little bit extra in overtime, then not have to double up on paying the 